Hello, my name is Joel Klepak. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. And I'd like to share with you um, something called self-compassion. Uh, the material I'm going to use has mostly been developed by the research of Dr. Kristen Neff, and I will show you how to get to her resources. But I'd like to walk through um, some of uh, what self-compassion can do for us and uh, how you can build a practice of self-compassion into your life so that you can be more effective in helping other people and thriving in this movement. All right, so self-compassion. So why self-compassion? Kristen Neff says, instead of mercilessly judging and criticizing yourself for various inadequacies and shortcomings, self-compassion means you are kind and understanding when confronted with personal failings. After all, who said you were supposed to be perfect anyway? So self-judgment, self-criticism leads to over-identifying over with negative feelings and thoughts. It increases personal suffering and decreases effectiveness. So there is the thought that somehow if I'm more self-critical, I will be more effective. But research shows that it's actually the opposite. So self-compassion can lead us to, su to suffer less and to thrive. And this is what the research of Kristen Neff over the years has continually shown, is that the more people can develop a practice of self-compassion, the, the less they suffer and the more they thrive. So Kristen Neff came up with three basic elements or, or parts of self-compassion. So the first part is presence to self-experience. It's amazing how little we can be present to our own experience. Uh, and it's getting present to our own experience that gives us insight and knowledge to, uh, to effectively deal with whatever is in our present moment. Uh, the next part is perspective taking on the self. Um, this is getting getting away, getting a broader uh, perspective on what's happening rather than being stuck in that intensity of the emotion of that self-criticism or self-judgment, those kind of things. And the third element is affiliative warmth towards self. So some of this is just learning how to take some of that care and compassion and warmth that you maybe can very naturally share with other people uh, and it's learning how to share that with yourself uh, many people find it easy to care and love for others and difficult to care and love themselves so the first element presence to self-experience what i'd like to do is instead of just talking about it i'd like uh, for you to get a little bit more out of this so i'd like you to use this uh, with a personal example for yourself. And feel free to pause this at any time to take a few more moments to kind of reflect on your own uh, personal situation. So what I'd like you to do is think of something that you find yourself being self-critical about. Um, and I'm sure that's familiar to you. There's probably um, some specific things that come back to you time and time and time again. Uh, it might be something like, I can't believe I forgot my meeting again. I can't believe I'm late again. Uh, it could be any, anything that's a self-criticism. So think for a moment about, about what that might be. Just pick one. It, it really doesn't matter if it's the best one. Uh, anyone will probably work. Uh, okay. So once you get a situation that you're self-critical about. I want you to just focus in on your body sensations. And when you notice that self-critical uh, thought come up, what does it feel like in your body? Some people feel intense things in their head and their forehead and their face. 
some in tension around their neck, some in their chest, some in their gut, some in their hands. Sometimes people feel like a tingly all over kind of feeling or warmth uh, or feeling like things are closing in. There's all kinds of different things. But see if you can't isolate. Uh, what does it feel like in your body when you're in that self-critical mode? Okay. And then I would ask you, what are some of those feelings that are associated with that? How do you feel when the self-critic is getting real alive and active inside of you? Um, is it anxiety? Is it tension? Uh, you get angry. Is there sadness associated with it? What's associated with this self-critical thing that shows up for you? And with that information, we want to get to this piece. Um, what are the needs that are attempting to get met through getting uh, self-critical? So we're really trying to get some more presence to what's really happening here. Um, and so maybe I'm getting critical about, about being late for something. Um, so what might that be about? Um, so maybe, maybe for me being late for something is uh, that I'm, I'm really worried that um, it might affect how people feel about me. Maybe it'll affect my sense, my need for belonging and community. Um, maybe my need for respect. So that's the kind of deeper thing that maybe these body sensations and feelings point to. So take a moment and try to think about this in terms of this wheel. What is it that, uh, that may be in play here for you uh, that, that is attempting to get met through this self-critical thought? Okay, so this that was the first part. So this next part is perspective taking on self. Um, and this is not about trying to excuse or rationalize why you did something that you're, you're, you regret that you did. Um, but this piece of self-compassion is about recognizing your common humanity versus isolation. You are not alone in your suffering, okay? So again, you are not alone in your suffering and often what makes our suffering feel worse um, is that, so that feeling that I'm the only one, I'm the only one that does this. Why is it that everybody else can do this and get this and I can't? So try telling yourself a perspective statement like suffering is part of life or that's common to humanity other options may be other people feel this way I'm not alone we all struggle in our lives so these are just small statements but they really that really pull your attention a little bit broader and help you to begin to see that, yeah, you may suffer with this thing, um, but you're not the only one. You're part of this bigger human community that, that suffers with these same kind of things, okay? So the third part is this affiliative warmth towards self. Now this is the one that may feel weirder than the other ones, um, but just bear with me a little bit. Um, now you can do this in different ways. Uh, Kristen Neff, who researched self-compassion and has been developing this, she encourages you to put your hands over your heart and to feel the warmth of your hands and the gentle touch of your hands on your chest. Or adopt a soothing touch that you discovered felt right for you. It could be holding your hands together. Um, it, it could be 
um, kind of lots of different things. Whatever, whatever kind of feels comforting, feels soothing to you. Um, and there are some neurological things that happen when you put your hands on your chest, when you even feel that, that gentle touch of your hands. So now I want you to think about if this was a friend in the same situation, maybe struggling with the same self-criticism or judgment, how might you respond to them with warmth and kindness? What would you say to them? What would you say to them? And you can even write down this response. Uh, it sometimes is helpful to just write it down um, to make it a little bit more concrete. But what would you say to your friend who is struggling with this exact kind of self criticism And then go ahead and write down an alternative statement to the criticism uh, based on this kindness towards yourself. So what's a different kind of more gentle statement that carries some of this perspective that you could say to yourself? And once you narrow down this, this new alternative statement, go ahead and put your hands on your chest or what, whatever feels um, comforting, soothing to you, and say this to yourself. Just soak in it for a little bit. Don't be in a hurry. Maybe say it to yourself several times. So here's an example of self-compassion. Um, and I would encourage you to check out Kristen Neff's meditations and resources at selfcompassion.org. There are videos and there are texts, um, versions of these meditations. And I would encourage you to Consider developing a practice of self-compassion because again, instead of being self-critical, which doesn't actually give you a lot of insight into what's going on, it tends to over-identify you with the intense emotions. Um, this kind of self-compassion helps you see what's going on, helps you gain some perspective, and then it allows you some space to become more reflective and effective in uh, addressing whatever situation is in front of you. Well, thank you for joining me on this, and I hope it has been useful for you.